Hi friends, welcome back to Mustack. In today's session, we are going to discuss about the very important topic called Cloud of Persistent Keys. Okay, so if you look at my screen right now, this option is available per application. Okay, and it has you know <clears throat> limitation. It has a useful use cases where we can take advantage of this option. Okay, so let's discuss the the what are the use cases we can we can take help of this this uh, persistent queues and uh, we'll talk about the limitations also okay so the agenda is what is cloud of persistent queues how we can enable this and in which use cases we should use this and in which use cases we should not use this okay so let's start with the the first question what is cloud of persistent queues okay so the, this is uh, a cloud service that allows message, messages that are published to the VM queue to be stored externally to the application. External to the publication means wherever your application is deployed in the same region, you'll get a storage there. This messages will be stored, and this message will be stored and retrieved from that storage with the help of Amazon SQS service. Okay, so this feature is directly tied up with the cloud. Up. Okay, cloud of fabric service and is a part of cloud of high availability infrastructure. Okay, so when the cloud of persistent queues enabled this option, once we enabled this option, if you see the previous screen, once we enable this option, it allows developer to design VM queues in such a way that payload can be shared across different workers. Okay, for the purpose of load distribution. In the case of failure of any one of the worker, in multi worker de uh, deployment, messages on the queues are able to consume by other working, you know, other working workers. Okay, so this option will give you flexibility to share the load if your deployment is multi worker. Okay, then let's talk about the second point how to enable this. Okay, so as I said, per application, this option is available. So this option is available in the runtime manager. Go to application. And in application, there is a setting page. Okay, so in that setting page, you can go ahead and <clears throat> enable this option. Okay, now third, with this option, there is a one more option available. If you look at the screen, my screen, there is an encrypt option. Okay, so this option we can enable only if our subscription has that entire link. Okay, so this option will be available from Platinum onwards. Okay, so if you want this option, then you need to add on on your subscription. Okay, now let's talk about the use case where we can use it and where we should not use it. So the first use case is okay. So is a <clears throat> first is first of all this is a specific feature, right? And don't get confused with the the VM queue. Okay, this is little bit different. Let's talk about it. So its design is you know solely to enable capability. To share payloads across multi worker application deployment. Okay. So it should only be used for this purpose. Uh, enable, uh, you know, for, for this use case. Uh, now we'll, and this will improve the, the HA resiliency and performance due to load distribution and sharing capabilities. So, as I said, share payload across if your uh, application is deployed on multi worker. Then this option is very, very useful. Okay, cloud of persistent queues. In which scenario we should not use this? So, reliability pattern. Okay, so let me talk about it. So, cloud of persistent queues should not be confused with, like I, I said, right, the traditional mule persistent queues. Okay, so while mule persistent VM queues were intended to be a part of reliability pattern solution, this was never intention of cloud of persistent queues. The strong recommendation is that the cloud of persistent queue should not be considered as a feature to use when designing a reliability pattern. Okay, in cloud, basically. Okay, so cloud of persistent queues should not be enabled when you are deploying your application on single worker. Okay, so if you wanted to achieve a real true reliability pattern, then go for any point time queue, active MQ, or IBM or other. You know, equivalent JMS or AMQP brokers. Okay, don't use the cloud of persistent queues. Okay, 
Now let's talk about the limitations of this persistent queues. So first limitation is it degrades the performance. Okay, so applications with this queue enabled will process the messages up to or more than ten times slower. Okay, than not using cloud or persistent queues. So we need to make sure that when we want this and when we don't want this. Okay. And if you use the encrypt option, this performance is further significantly decreased, right? The reason for this is uh, cloud or persistent queues uses a network, right? As I said, you'll get a storage in the same region from where you'll be using Amazon SQ service to get the data, store the data. And if you're encrypting again, then it will take more time. So read and write speed will get reduced, okay? Then, in case of bad job, okay, so bad job will use local file system based on persistent use on the worker. So this is little bit when when the persistent queue checkbox is unticked, okay, the VM queues will be stored either in memory or local file system based on the work VM queue configuration. Okay, so that we need to uh, keep in mind. Then if you compare with Mule 3 versus Mule 4, for Mule 3 deployed application, enabling this option will persist both developer design VM queues and also the Mule 3 intended SEDA queues. For this reason, the performance impact may be greater than NTPC. Mule 4, in Mule 4 case, this, this, uh, you know, this is improved a lot. Now, if you talk about one-time <clears throat> messages delivery, okay? One-time message delivery cannot be guaranteed with cloud of persistent queues, Dupli duplicate messages can be sent. If your solution requires strict one-time delivery, then you should not use this. Okay. Let's talk about the message retention. Okay. So mess message retention. So this queue will retain messages for four days. Okay. This retention period is not customizable. We cannot customize it because of this cloud of persistent queues should not be used for any long-term storage, okay? Then let's talk about batch job. So here also there is a limitation. So mule batch job internally make use of queues, right? When cloud of persistent queues is enabled for an application where we are using batch processors, the severe performance degradation will occur, okay? Batch also has its own set of limitation incurred if using cloud of persistent queues. The message reliability is not guaranteed in case of you know batch process if you are using cloud of persistent queues. Message message loss can still occur in case of application re, you know restart. It can be intentional or unintentional. And this limitation means there is no benefit of having cloud of persistent queues enabled for the batch application. So recommendation is cloud of persistent queues should not be enabled if the application has a batch processor. Okay, then last but not the least, in case of XA transaction, in, in specific situation, there are chances that XA transaction will fail to be successfully rolled back. Okay, so in that case, this uh, can cause a problem. Okay, so I, I'll give you the links, okay, which I have referred for this presentation. Hope you like it. Hope this topic is you know, impart, important in some case for you. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.